So normally on this channel, I'm the one that comes up with the ideas about the content to deliver to you about my marketplace here in Surrey, BC to help you learn more about real estate in the market and in the province. But this video, I can't take credit for. Note the idea for this video comes from one of our team members, Chandani, who spends most of her time working with our clients that are buying real estate. Chandani's job is to spend most of her time actually in the properties, like boots on the ground with our clients. And man, is she good at actually, in fact, both of the team members on my team that spend most of their time with our buyers, that's Chandani and Eric, are probably now better at that side of the transaction than I am. But that's obviously because I trained them. And really, that makes me kind of like Obi-Wan. That begs the question, which one of them is Luke and which one is Anakin? But anyway, so Chandani came to me and she asked me to tell people on this very channel, and I'm going to use her words here. Um, can you tell people to please stop writing stupid offers? And I'm going to tell you exactly what Chandani means by that right after I ask you to click the like button. Yes, please click the like button and subscribe. And if you're about to find out that you're a buyer that is making stupid offers out there, you can book a call with me right down below in the description to see if we can fix that for you. But on the other hand, if you're one of the agents out there that's helping clients write these stupid offers, and you need a little bit of help explaining that to them, uh, you can apply to my mentorship program right down below in the description as well. And with that out of the way, let's find out what the heck Chandani is talking about in a slightly offensive way. You see, everybody in today's market that is a buyer, I guess sellers as well, are experiencing competing offers, commonly known as bidding wars. This is when there are more buyers trying to buy the property than there are properties for sale, and which is usually only one in a transaction. And that causes buyers to have to compete against each other in order to make their offer the best and get accepted by the seller as opposed to a more traditional transaction, which would be you as the buyer negotiating hopefully downwards in price from the seller's asking price. Well, recently we're starting to experience 10 to 25 offers on every single property that our clients are interested in. I mean, just last week, Chandani wrote an offer for a client against 23 other offers. So she was offer number 24. Now, luckily, she was successful, but quite often, well, in this case, there's 23 other buyers that were completely unsuccessful. That's super frustrating, and both Chanani and I and the rest of my team are very sympathetic because often we are also one of those other 23 offers. And we understand how hard it is to get into the market these days if you are a buyer. It's not fun for us, and I know it's not fun for you. Just by sheer numbers of how many people want to get into the market puts absolutely everybody at a disadvantage to actually try and get into the market. So in this example, one person is happy. Well, two people are happy. The seller is happy, and the one buyer, that in this case our client, is happy. The 23 other people super unhappy. But let me elaborate from the other side when I have a property that is my listing like we did just last week. Again, we didn't have 23 offers on this property or 24 offers on this property. Instead, we had 10, I think there might have been 11. So basically, there were 11 buyers that found value in the property at the asking price out of what was more than 30 showing. So let's say one in three buyers actually wanted to try an offer on the property. So that's what they did. 11 buyers with 11 Seven of their agents got together and put together their offers and submitted them on the offer date. But to, I mean, try and keep the sensitivity in mind that these are real people having trouble getting into the market. Uh, at the exact same time, I want to kind of go over what a lot of those offers look like to try and stress Chandani's point. Often the offers will look like this. Three to four of them will be okay offers. They are, uh, in this situation, obviously you're going to have to be in excess of whether the asking price is, so they may be that, but they're just okay, and those offers are not written in a way that are actually putting that buyer or their agent in a position to win the property, and unfortunately, even with these crazy high prices right now, winning the property is the best deal because next week properties will sell for more. But these particular ones, like I said, they could be in excess of the asking price, um, but most of them have all of the conditions in. Conditions are a subject to the buyer verifying something after the offer is accepted. And if you ask 
me at this point, if you have that many conditions in any offer, given what the market is doing, that's showing to me that the agent on the other side has not educated their client uh, in simple steps that they can do reading certain documentation in order to remove those conditions in advance of the offer. So I, as the listing agent, kind of view that as kind of lazy agentness. But then we're going to have another, let's call it three offers. Those three offers are going to be very strong offers. Regardless of their price, the agents have probably done all the work that they can to remove as many conditions as they possibly can. Again, those disclosure, strata documentation, all this type of stuff. However, a lot of those buyers, and this is where I really feel for a lot of people right now, they are in a spot where they still need the financing condition in and they obviously don't want to pay for an inspection if they don't know if they get the property. So we'll have three, maybe four, offers that currently will have very few conditions at all but they still have conditions these are people that are trying their best to get into the property like the agents trying hard the buyers trying hard but they're just not in a great spot that could be financially or maybe they're just not used to the market yet because they haven't lost all of these kind of deals that more serious buyers have lost already in the past and some of these offers could even possibly be unconditional. But when we have 10 offers, I almost guarantee you three of those offers, the three next offers are there to win. So right now to win a property in 10 plus offers as this situation was, or, or Chanani's a little while back, um, you need to have done all of your due diligence in advance prior to writing the offer. This means no lazy agents or lazy buyers allowed. Like you have to come to win with all of the strata documentation done, a pre-approval from the bank, all complete. If you're going to do an inspection, do it before the offer and take that four or $500 risk on instead of trying to do it after. These three will now be for sure the highest price. They're always the highest price because the, the buyer is motivated to get in. They're all unconditional. And in today's market right now, Every single one of those offers, well, most of them, will have uh, the deposit check in hand, meaning the property is sold today. There's no waiting for deposit tomorrow. And in this one scenario I had, I had three of these offers altogether. The difference was one of them didn't have deposit, the other two did. The seller took the one they liked the best out of the one that had deposit. So even if the best best offer still didn't have deposit there the seller would not have taken it because it wasn't a sure thing that day right now and that leaves us with one offer left which is what chandani refers to as the stupid offer what now she says that kind of to be silly and that's how we talk together here in the office but um it, it's not to be mean it's just meant to say hey you know this is not an effective strategy. And if anything, it's just making things worse because for sure out of 11 offers, we're going to get that one offer that is below the asking price when they know they're in competition with 10 other buyers. They have all six conditions or more in to the contract, which means they've done none of their due diligence. And on top of that, their financing condition might be for 14 or 17 days, which is completely unrealistic. I mean, it's almost unrealistic to get your financing approved after the offer rather than before these days. And for a seller who's looking at 10 other offers to possibly consider not selling to you for $100,000 less and waiting 17 days to do so, well, as Chandani would say, it's just stupid. But now that we've offended everybody and we're just, you know, heartless realtors, let me explain. Property that gets 11 offers will sell for a lot more than a property that gets three, four, five, or six offers. So what I'm proposing here is actually very simple. As a buyer or a buyer's agent, if you don't stand a chance to win, or if you're not actually putting forth an offer that is going to put you in those top three, and you should know if you stand a chance to win, like you should be educated enough for that. Please just don't write the offer. Essentially, if you're in a competing offer situation and you know there's more than two other offers and you find yourself saying, can we just give it a try? Please just don't give it a try. But why do I say that? It may not be for the reasons that you think. It's simply the fact that if you're adding an offer into the pile on a property that you're not 100% in on, and that offer obviously isn't going to win you the property, you are only helping pump up the sale price 
of that property. And what's that going to do? Well, it's not going to get you the property. That property is now going to sell for more and it's going to set a new benchmark price. So if you're trying to get into, in this case, that condo building, the next property that comes up is only going to sell for more than the last one. And now if you want to try and get into that property, you're going to have to pay even more for what could be a lesser property. So with all that being said, I'm not trying to be insensitive and I'm not trying to say that the struggle to get into the market right now isn't a very real one causing a lot of heartache for a lot of people. But I have to agree with Chandani. I'm not going to call them stupid offers, but I'm going to call them silly offers because I don't think they're real. And in this example, uh, I'm even going to go so far as saying those first three offers that are okay, slightly over the asking price and uh, maybe conditional, well, they also probably should not be written. And hopefully the buyer is being educated by their agent in understanding that they probably don't stand a chance in the first place. It's up to the buyer's agent to educate their client to let them know that this property isn't one where you just give it a try. Everyone as a whole would be better off in the market if those offers didn't come to the plate because it would stop house prices from rising as fast as they are right now. So if you end up in a scenario where you only had two or three very serious offers, that property would sell for less than if you have seven or eight not serious offers and two or three very serious offers. I mean, I know I shouldn't probably say it that way because there are people out there that are doing their best to try and get into the marketplace. But if you don't have a solid plan, and you're unable to identify the situation that you're walking into, well, maybe you should just book a call with me right down below in the description so we can iron that all out for you. And as I said before, if you're an agent having trouble explaining this type of concept to your clients, uh, just go ahead and apply to my mentorship program right now so we can try and help you out. My intention here is not to have this be a negative video where I'm, I'm making people feel bad, but I do think that this is a message that needs to get out there to the general public in order to put some sort of self-imposed slowdown as a a hole on this crazy market. And before you go, if you could do me a favor and click the like button to help get this message out to more people so we can hopefully try and fix the problem, I would really appreciate it. Make sure you check out my video all about the problem in today's Canadian real estate market, and we'll see you in a couple of days.